So John, welcome. It's uh, National Authors Day, a time when we can tip our caps to our favorite authors. Naturally, as you are a retired Winnipeg police officer who spent plenty of time in criminal investigations, perhaps more specifically in the homicide unit, I wanted to reach out to you and talk about your projects and inspirations. Thank you for joining me. Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. So you presently have two books out as part of the Detective Inspector John Cahill series. What motivated you to take up writing and perhaps more specifically to write about criminal investigations? Well, you know, you, you hear always that you should write about what you know, and uh, it's whether I know it or not, it's what I did. You know, so um, I spent best part of 25 years uh, with the Winnipeg Police Service and uh, probably close to 12 and a half years in, in and out of the homicide unit in different ranks and finally ended up as uh, the sergeant in charge there, one of the sergeants in charge as the supervisor. And um, during those years from about 2004 to 2018, I was involved in one way or another in over 250 homicides uh, investigations. So it was, you know, it, it was something that I knew and something that um, it just built up over the years. And now when I retired, I figured it was a good outlet to, to try and let off some of the steam that was built up and to, to get it out of the way. And, you know, just to, to unload some of the, the baggage that I had picked up along the way. So book one, The Deadly Steps, uh, yeah. by the way, rocking five solid stars on Amazon. Uh, tell us a little bit about that book, please. What's the plot? The Deadly Steps, well, I, I introduced the, the protagonist, uh, John Cahill, um, at the beginning of the book for probably the first number of chapters. And he's a, he's a, a guy who was an unlikely policeman. He, he never wanted to, he never intended to become a policeman. He took a different role in life, uh, started off working with racehorses and getting married and uh, after that, uh, you know, he progressed into the racehorsing, racehorse business. But um, life, as it does, it took a different turn, and uh, he ended up not being able to work in that industry any longer due to in injury, and um, ended up becoming a policeman in Northern Ireland, of all places. He, John Cahill was in the Republic of Ireland, way down south, at the time, but. Um, by the time he got injured, he was uh, in his early to mid thirties, too old to join the uh, police service in the Republic of Ireland, but in Northern Ireland, uh, they took him on and so that's where he went. And after a number of years uh, in Northern Ireland, he had an opportunity to work in an integrated unit back in the Republic. So he made his way down to the Republic and uh, that's where the story begins for the deadly steps and he gets involved in the investigation of what appears to be an unsolvable homicide where uh, a young lady is coming home from work late at night, steps off the bus, gets set upon by three thugs and um, ends up being beaten to death for having done nothing except coming home from work. And it, it's, it's, something that's played out so many times in my career that I've seen this like senseless killing. And I just based it loosely around an investigation that I was involved in. And uh, from there, I just, you know, built my characters and let the story run around it. Uh, using techniques that, describing techniques that I had used in, in investigations but really giving no secrets away that aren't already out in the public domain. So that's that's kind of where the deadly steps is. Fantastic. Now, the second book has me intrigued simply through the title alone, Alibi for an Alibi. Where are you taking John Cahill in this story? Well, again, you know, we take John Cahill and his team of investigators because it's not a solo, it's not a solo adventure, but uh, for, for this one, he finds himself faced with two homicides, actually three homicides, all occurring on the same night. They all appear to be unrelated, but they're all 
based around the the street gang violence that occurs within every city in the world really and uh, this the street gang violence it's really always been looked upon as a public order problems and you know low organization skills from the from the gang members but this one actually shows that there's a little bit more structure to these gangs and that they should be taken a little bit more seriously and uh you know again there's totally different investigations and it shows the stress that's involved in working through these investigations and getting the, the proper results at the end of them and it it shows alibi for an alibi the title itself shows that a, a murder is planned and an alibi is set up but however it doesn't quite work out and now they actually, the, the people who had planned that first murder, they need an alibi for their alibi because something else goes wrong that night. So it's, um, it, it's, it was a good story to write. I enjoyed writing it. Um, I, again, it's based loosely on a, a couple of investigations that I was involved in in Winnipeg. And uh, again, like, these are all investigations that they were they meant a lot to me and to the people i worked with at the time but they were never really world famous investigations one thing claude about my books is that they're not your traditional murder mystery um i i tell the reader pretty much right away who's responsible and uh, then it's building the background of why they're responsible and what happens as you know how how do you, the police get the result that they get how do they get this to court? How do they get a conviction? And so it's not your traditional who done it. In fact, it's why they did it. Why they did did it. Now, it really shouldn't be that much of a surprise to you uh, that you'd write about these investigations. I mean, you've been involved in the investigative investigative world uh, with over two hundred and fifty five homicides. I think you mentioned before, and hundreds of sudden uh, and suspicious deaths. Uh, you come at this with a knowledge base only someone with your background could possess. What has been your writing process? Um, I think, you know, I, I, I worked with some great people over the years, and they were the ones that influenced me on how to do my job and how to get the results that, that we did and it, how to you know lead an investigation or work within an investigation and work within a team that's conducting an investigation so these are the people that really drove me to to do the work and when i write the books i try and you know the the protagonist uh, in the book john kale is not me it's it's a bunch of other people and maybe even including me, the people that I worked with, people that influenced me. And, um, you know, it's it's just, and, and the other investigators in, in the stories, they're all people, you know, they're not one person. They're all, a collection of all the people that I worked with over the years and show their personality and how much they were dedicated to getting the work done and getting the job done. And that's, I try and humanize all these people rather than just making it a sensational plot and something along those lines. Now, are there any authors that inspire you to, uh, to shape the writing that you do? Well, I love to read and I, I read every day. Uh, and, um, but of course I read, I, I try not to read true crime. Um, and I really haven't set out to write about true crime either. Because I, I, I think sometimes it re-victimizes the victims and their families. But uh, some of the greatest influences I've had would be uh, Dick Francis, uh, old English uh, author from back in the, the 60s, uh, his son Felix Francis, Ken Bruin, um, who's an Irish author, um, really writes some really good crime novels, but they're all a bit dark and uh, some of my stuff has been described as being a bit dark too. Uh, Bernard Cornwell, who uh, another British author who wrote the historical um, Napoleonic War Sharp series, and uh, I've read all of them. There's about 30 books in it that are just amazing. The description, the way he describes 
the battles in the Napoleonic War in, in Europe. And then there's another Irish author, uh, Tana French. Uh, and again, her work is uh, a little bit dark, but uh, really good, um, really good stories. And it, it certainly try and copy and, and definitely am influenced by the way that they uh, write their stories as well. So I suspect it must be somewhat therapeutic and cathartic uh, for you. What do you enjoy most about the writing process? I, I like, you know, reliving some of the stories uh, that and some of the investigations, but I, I like being able to put my own twist to them as well. And, uh, you know, the, the nice thing about this is I get to control the ending, uh, which, uh, you know, it, it wasn't always possible. It, uh, it was never possible when you were an investigator working on a, on a real investigation. Uh, but um, I do find it therapeutic and I do find it somewhat cathartic to, to able to unload some of the baggage. Uh, and, you know, when you deal with homicide, it's sudden violent death and you know one of the things that I, I try to portray there is that it's not just the victim it's not just the accused there's a whole load of other people there's other there's extended families of the victim and the accused and, mm. and the, even the investigators say it's it changes lives um, for a lot of people and I try and get that down there, try and get it out to people so they can look at the, the human side of both the the people who are involved in the homicide, but also the people who are involved in investigating the homicide. Now, it, it, it truly is work, a labor of love to be sure. What has been the most challenging or trying part of getting these books into the hands of readers? Well, it's, I, I, I literally have, found it impossible to find a, a publisher an agent who who wants to run with with something uh, if true crime is probably the uh, the flavor of the day right now and uh, novels um, not so much but um, I self-publish and I distribute through um, a company in the United States and uh, they distribute these books all over the world, uh, mostly in the ebook form, but they're also available in the printed form. And um, I've got emails and notes from people in Australia, people in Europe, people in Ireland, England, people in the United States who've read the book so far. And it's really good to, to hear that kind of feedback from, from people who have read them, people that I don't know. And uh, they you know, I try and get it out there a little bit by social media. I am absolutely hopeless when it comes to, to social media. It's something that I avoided for all my working life. And uh, now uh, trying to get into it uh, as an old guy, like uh, an old dinosaur, trying to find his way around Facebook, which is probably almost obsolete anyway. So, you know, it's just something that uh, uh, it, it's not about selling books. It's about me getting them out, getting, getting it down on paper and putting it out there. And if somebody wants to read it and look, at, you know, get something out of it, great. Uh, that's even better. And what is that, that you want the reader to take away from your work? What I really want people to take away from the work is that this is not routine. Um, and the dedication of the people who are involved in in investigating somebody's death um you know that's that's what i want them to take away that you know the the cops are human and the cops care and uh you know unsolved is unacceptable that's kind of the message that i want to get out there excellent last question is there a third book in the works oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I plan to do five claude um, wow so the third one is actually with um, a very good friend of mine who's doing some editing for me uh, at the moment. And we might get that out there uh, within the first few months of next year. Um, I was halfway through the fourth one. Uh, and uh, then I had another brainstorm or something like that. And uh, then I just went back and rewrote the start of it. So I don't, I think I might be maybe a third of the way through that. And, and then um, I actually 
started to write the last one before it, the second last one, and it, it just didn't work for me. Um, it was, uh, you know, there, there's some things that I, some of the investigations that I was involved in are, they were really difficult to work through. So I had to put that one away for a while. I will go back to it and, uh, and do it then, but who knows, then I might do some short stories or something like that. But But I do have a plan to write five and there's, Three of them are done now. There's two of them that have been published. Third one is on the way. And the fourth one is halfway, maybe, maybe a little less. <laughs> well, John, we want to thank you for, for the time you've given us today. Uh, thank you so much for your service with, with the Winnipeg Police Service. And uh, once again, thank you for these uh, for these books. Wish you all Thanks the best. Thanks very much. Thanks, Claude. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take, Take care. care.